Hello everyone, my name is Martin Hayes. I'm an application engineer at GoEngineer and today we're going to take a look at generating your first CNC code with SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. The first thing we want to do is go into your add-ins menu and turn on the add-in for either SOLIDWORKS CAM or for CAMWORKS. SOLIDWORKS CAM is the 2.5 axis CNC code software built into every license of SOLIDWORKS and CAMWORKS is capable of going up into the 3, 4, 5 axis as well as wire EDM modules and uh, other applications. Once you have the add-in turned on and loaded, you got access to the CAMWORK tools both in the feature tree on the left side menu where you can access your CAMWORKS features which is the geometry itself. Going through we've got a few groups of pockets, the face feature at the top of the setup, um, some slots and holes, hole groups illustrated there. So the features themselves are actually the, uh, the geometry that's going to be recognized by CAMWORKS. And so with SOLIDWORKS CAM, CAMWORKS as well, the geometry itself is recognized not in uh, the way it's designed, but in the way it's going to be machined. So you can actually work with parts that were designed in SOLIDWORKS or parts that have been imported into SOLIDWORKS from other systems. We've got a second setup here on the back side of the part with a few holes, counterbore holes. Um, similar setup on the um, left side of the part, on the right side of the part. Uh, mill part setup four is on the bottom side for those through holes that would be milled on the back side of the part. And then there's a couple additional setups that are actually at an angle for these holes on the side. So if we go into a uh, wireframe view here, you can see where those holes would be machined into the part from the side there. So this is the CAMWORKS feature tree where the geometry itself lives. From here, the features are turned into operations and uh, a single feature could have several operations. We've got the face milling operation, rough milling, contour milling for each of the different pockets and uh, slots. And then you see center drill, drill, as well as contouring operations for the holes in this first setup. The third tab on the feature tree for working with CAMWORKS is your tool crib tab. And so you'll see each tool that you've got available and loaded into this part, as well as all the operations that are assigned to that tool. Across the top of the screen, you've got your SOLIDWORKS CAM, CAMWORKS Command Manager tab where you've got access on the command manager tab to everything from um, setting up the machine and the coordinate system and the stock to creating the individual setups and features themselves. Uh, we're going to look at using automatic feature recognition as well as manual interactive feature recognition for creating features, creating the operations to go with those features, and then from there generating the toolpath, simulating the toolpath, um, you can do a step through as a little bit different type of simulation we'll take a look at and then post processing it out. So you'll see we kind of work left to right across the command manager or top to bottom through the CAMWORKS feature tree and operation trees as we go through our process. Um, you've also got access to several different uh, tools for creating features and operations um, uh, in that command manager tab as well as the general options and controls for the software. So we've seen what uh, the features and operations look like on the feature tree within SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. Uh, now let's take a look at um, after the features and operations are created, what does the simulation look like? Uh, so we'll run through the simulation and uh, you'll see as it cuts through the different features, um, we can use this uh, simulation mode to be able to see where there might be any gouging on the part or where uh, extra material maybe wasn't removed if we're using too big of a tool and it can't get into the tight corners we might be able to uh, look at this and, and see areas that either need to be adjusted or uh, features and tools that might need to be added to the operations. Running it through the end here we'll go ahead and let it finish this setup and I'll show you a couple of the modes and controls we have in the simulation. Once the simulation is finished, you can actually run a comparison mode, the little green icon here. And comparison will show you areas that have been machined uh, completely in green, areas that 
have additional material that needs to be removed in blue. And then if there were any gouges where you had uh, lead ins that were too long or um, extra cuts on the part, they would show up in, in red or orange, depending how deep they were. So we're going to open this part fresh. And uh, if you have Camworks installed, this part actually comes in the example files for Camworks. Um, so unfortunately, it doesn't come with SOLIDWORKS Cam. Uh, there are tutorials available in both parts of the software. You can go to Help, Camworks or SOLIDWORKS Cam Tutorials to access the, um, the guided tutorials with um, several other sample parts. But the part we'll be working with in this example is on your installation C drive, Camworks data, Camworks, examples, mill, and the name of the part is base-mm sldprt. So we'll open that part and what you're seeing here is exactly how the part would look after it was designed or as soon it was opened. Um, this file is actually an older file than SOLIDWORKS 2020 so we'll go ahead and click save to upgrade that file to make it a current version. Um, from there we'll get access to our Camworks tools and work through again left to right through the command manager or top to bottom through the feature tree and the operation tree. So we'll start with defining our machine. You can either access that on the command manager or by double clicking machine on the feature tree. The first tab here is going to give us controls over the machine itself. So which machine do we want to select from our database? For us, the mill metric machine is going to be perfect for us. Uh, but you can double click on the machine or select the machine and hit the select button to set it as the active machine. You'll see that in the bottom part of the screen there. If I were to switch it to the turning machine, We'll switch it back to the mill metric machine. The second tab here on the machine dialog is the tool crib tab where you've got access to all the tools that are loaded for this part. Um, so this is controlled from our database as what our default tools and our default tool crib is. If we switch over to the empty tool crib, you'll see you could actually kind of build your own and save it and develop your own database that way. The third tab is the post processor tab where we'll choose a post-processor associated with our machine. For this example, we'll just be working with the MIL 3-axis tutorial post-processor. Let me show you what it looks like to switch that and what post-processors are included with the installation of Camworks and SOLIDWORKS Cam. If you'll click Browse, it'll take you into the post folder uh, that you're already in, the default post folder. Um, so C, Camworks Data, Camworks, Posts. And let's go into the MIL folder and take a look at the mill posts that are included with the installation of Camworks. I know this is often a, a question to ask is, uh, is, is my post processor going to be included by default? Um, we have post processor development teams if one of these isn't going to work for you, but this is definitely the place to start and to check and test these posts if they work for your application. I'm going to cancel out of that and um, show you what it looks like if you were to pick a post. You always hit that select button and that'll set it as the active post processor. We'll choose the MIL 3 axis and click select and it will push that up into the active post processor. The fourth tab is the posting tab where you've got controls that are unique to your post processor. So this post processor is actually requesting an input for the part thickness and the arc deviation and then the program number that will get posted out with the code. Um, depending on what post processor you use or if yours has additional inputs, they would appear here. The setup tab is used to enable indexing as well as you can uh, use that fixture coordinate system button there to get a shortcut to the uh, coordinate system dialog. And then the rotary axis and tilt axis tabs are used if you have indexing enabled for four or five axis indexing. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. We left everything mostly default. Next we'll take a look working our way top to bottom or left to right. We'll take a look at defining the stock. You can either click on it in the command manager or you can uh, click double click on it in the feature tree. So the first thing we see in the stock manager is access to the material choice. Um, the question I get a lot, it does the material get read in from the SOLIDWORKS material that's chosen? Um, it does not. You go ahead and select your material here and uh, that's not just for uh, an indicator or a line of the post, it actually helps determine the feeds and speeds that we recommended for the material you're working with. So you can add to that material database by going into your TechDB, so the Technology Database button on the Camworks tab, go to Feeds and Speeds, and the Feeds and Speeds editor 
will give you a list of all the currently installed materials, the speeds and feeds for those materials on the second tab there. So if we switch this over to our default 6061, you'll see the feeds and speeds associated with that. And then on the install tab, you can actually choose additional materials. They've got over a thousand or so materials available that you would just check that box if you wanted to include materials specific to your application, uh, to your workflow installed into the database. Close this for now. We'll take a look at the uh, where you can actually assign the default stock material in the technology database. So here you can see I've got a list of my currently installed materials and I can pick which one I want to and enable it as the default from that screen. We'll close the TechDB from here, go back to our part and look at the uh, stock setup again. So we are going to leave the material set on that default 6061. Um, the, st the shape of the stock can actually be assigned um, by one of four different ways. So you can assign your, the shape of your stock based on the bounding box of the part. That's the default we see here. You can assign it based on a sketch and extrude a sketch with a depth or up to a face. You can assign the stock shape based on an STL file, an independent part file, or even a configuration within uh, the, the current part file. So we'll keep it on bounding box for now. Take a look at the settings here. You can increase the offsets for each side of the bounding box. And actually, if you click on the X plus, Y plus, or Z plus buttons, you can set those to be symmetric for your part. Um, so I'm gonna put 10 millimeters in both sides of all three directions. Now, if we were to use extruded sketch, I believe we have a sketch from the initial feature that was created here that might be a good choice here, sketch number one. You just select it in the box and we can either give it a blind depth or we can choose to offset from a face. So click in the bottom face, we can do a zero offset from it. Um, we can go to use a STL file. So you would just click the browse button and select the STL file. Same way for working with a part file or if you wanted to choose a certain configuration from the current part that's already open. So we're gonna switch it back to the bounding box and use those 10 millimeter offsets. That gives us a stock size of 370 by 370 with a Y depth of 90 millimeters. Once we've got the stock created, we'll go ahead and keep working our way down the feature tree. We'll create a coordinate system. You can use an entity selection, like a, a point on the model to create that. And then you can define the X, Y, Z axes based on edges or um, normal to faces of the model. So for instance, if we wanted to create that there, there's a button for reverse direction if we need to switch uh, as we select those axes. Um, if you use an entity to place the uh, origin on a circular edge, it'll actually choose the center of that circular edge and place axes there. So that's great if you've got everything zeroed down to the, the center of a hole that's already existing. We can also use the part bounding box or the stock bounding box to directly create the origins and place the origin. Um, so here we could place our coordinate system using either one of the corners or the top center of the part, or um, you might want to use the corners or the top center of your stock. Um, so for our application, we'll keep it on that stock bounding box vertex. We'll use the top center. And then whether you're using an entity or using a stock bounding box, we can use the axes controls to place those. And so here's an example, we could actually place them based off normal to faces. So Z is coming normal off that face selected. And then the X is coming off this other face that's selected. So always verify looking at the coordinate system, which, uh, you know, your X, Y, and Z directions are correct. We'll click OK to go ahead and accept those coordinate system settings. Um, but to point out, you could also use a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system to define your fixture coordinate system. So if you had a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system in the feature tree, that can be selected there. Or once you've got it placed like we did, you can actually create a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system on the fly. So we'll create one, assign it as the coordinate system, and hit OK. Hit the green check to assign it. And then you'll actually see that fixture coordinate system will show up as a SOLIDWORKS feature in the SOLIDWORKS feature tree. So that's a top center of the stock. We've created a SOLIDWORKS entity there. I'm gonna go ahead and hide it just so it's not cluttered on the screen. Right click and hide, the little eyeball icon. 
And just to confirm, we've got that fixture coordinate system assigned as our, as our coordinate system in SOLIDWORKS. From here, we're ready to create our setups. They can be created manually from the command manager, or you can right-click on the stock manager and choose mill part setup. So a setup is strictly going to assign a direction, so we can use a face or a plane. In this case, I want to create the setup from the top using that top face. We can reverse direction if it's needed, um, if there wasn't a flat face on the top to select. And it doesn't matter what depth you select it at, um, strictly is going to assign the direction. So you see top, front, right. Um, we're going to create a mill part setup on any of those top faces to go down into the part. So that'll place mill part setup one in our feature tree. From here, we're ready to go ahead and create our features. You can either right click on the setup and recognize the features for just that one setup, or you can use that extract machinable features button to create all the setups uh, automatically with the features that are in those setups. Um, so we did a little extra work there creating the mill part setup ourselves. Um, and it's up to you if you want to create the setups manually and recognize the features within each of those setups, or if you want to just use the global extract machinable features. One of the things I like to do before running extract machinable features is to uh, check my CamWorks options and make sure I've got my feature conditions selected correctly. CamWorks options is nested all the way to the far right side of the SOLIDWORKS CAM CamWorks menus. You'll hit those little double arrows over there and be able to see where CamWorks options is at. One of the things I like to do since I, I go into that a lot to check my settings before I run extract machinable features is um, we'll just minimize our window here and shift it over so we can get access to that button. We'll actually customize our menu and uh, shift the button into a more accessible position. So I typically like to do this after a new installation. So we'll just widen the, the bar there, right click and go to customize. And then once customize menus open, we can actually drag that CamWorks options over there. I just like to put it closer to over there by default feature strategies where it's easier to access later. Resize your window, we'll get things back to maximum. You can see CamWorks options is available on the screen for us. In the CamWorks options menu, the first tab is your general settings. Um, we don't actually adjust these a whole lot. You'll get these set the way you like it and uh, keep it from there. One thing to note here is that CamWorks does take over autosave while that add-in is active. Um, that way the SOLIDWORKS autosave won't try to write to the hard drive while there's processing going on to generate toolpaths. The mill features tab is uh, one that I come to a lot to check things before I run extract machinable features. So here you can choose what feature types you want to be extracted automatically. And so I've deselected face and part perimeter because I typically don't want each of those in every setup. I just want them to show up in uh, the setups that I want to create late, um, manually. Um, so I'll choose the setups that I want those to be in later and not generate them during the automatic um, feature recognition. So I've got holes, non-holes, boss, and tapered and filleted selected. Um, you'll also note under hole recognition options, there is a, a field for max diameter. So anything over that max diameter is not going to be recognized as a hole with a drilling operation. It'd be recognized as a circular pocket so that it gets rough and contour operations like a pocket instead of point operations like a hole. The display tab allows you to customize the CamWorks overlay on the, the viewport, so the different colors for the different aspects of CamWorks. The simulation tab gives you controls over the accuracy versus speed, the quality versus speed of the simulation. I like to push those up to almost all the way to quality um, just to get a nice smooth model but not take quite too long with it. And then the update tab gives you some general controls over um, the behavior of CamWorks and uh, whether you want new features to be added into the tree, how deleting um, features is controlled, if generating operations or generating toolpaths is done automatically when features and corresponding operations are created. You can control in the second box how toolpaths update when your model itself changes. Uh, I typically like to keep three axis toolpaths to a prompt to update because uh, those take a little bit longer to update. So Having that set to prompt can get my confirmation before it, it takes a little bit longer to allow those to run. And then the file locations tab is your general settings um, for behind the scenes in CamWorks, where the files are stored and uh, accessible. 
Um, so Extract Machinable Features is actually going to recognize the features of the part itself and as well as the setups that are necessary for those parts. So this does a lot of the work for us. You'll actually see that CamWorks message window pop up to kind of give you a, a status as it reads through. Um, but let's kind of take a look at the features that we've got created in these setups. We've got the circular and rectangular slots, the irregular uh, slot, and um, a rectangular pocket. And then we go into the hole groups for the, each of the different um, sizes of holes that are created. And they're grouped by size based off the exact geometry. Um, we'll each create a group. And beside each of these operate, uh, features, there's a strategy listed. So many of the holes are listing a drill strategy. Um, many of the pockets and slots are listing a rough, rough rest, and finish strategy. So the strategy is there to determine what operations are going to be used to create those features. Now we did leave off the facing operations and the part perimeter operations. So we can go in and create those manually. Uh, so you can do that from the command manager as well. What I like to do is typically work just with right click menus on the feature tree. So right click on setup one and choose two and a half axis feature. Two and a half axis feature dialog gives you the option to choose between the different feature types. Um, so two and a half axis features are mostly self-explanatory. We've got a great article in our knowledge base, um, kb.goengineer.com, that gives you like uh, imagery examples of each of these applications. Um, but again, CamWorks and SolidWorks Cam recognize the part based on things like pockets, slots, bosses, holes, facing operations, open profiles, instead of recognizing them like the way they're designed in SolidWorks. So here we want to create a face feature for the top, of, uh, top face of the model. And then for the selection, um, we've got that set to outer loops. And when we select a face, it's going to choose the outside loop of that face. Uh, if we were selecting edge by edge, uh, you can either choose to select using an open chain or when you pick an edge to convert that edge into the entire loop. With that face selected, we'll go ahead and click end condition. That'll push us over into uh, setting how far from that face that this, uh, this feature goes. First thing you'll see at the top here, the type is face feature, um, but here under strategy, we can choose how do we want uh, this, this part, uh, this area of the part to be machined. And so the strategy, typical strategy for a facing operation is just a finished strategy. And if you hover your mouse over that, it'll actually show you the tech, tech DB um, entry that's being used for that. And the facing operation with the 50 millimeter tool that is going to be the default for the finishing operation, uh, finishing strategy on a face feature. Now the end condition, we can, uh, the default here is up to stock. If we change that to blind, we can actually control the depth that we want this face feature to encompass. If we choose up to face, you can choose a reference to go to or an offset from face um, to pick a reference uh, and, and offset it from that. So 20 millimeters offset from that face or 30 millimeters, you can choose the direction. Um, I typically use up to stock if my stock size is accurate um, to be able to just take that top 10 millimeters off using up to stock. And then the use stock extents option, it kind of allows us to control the footprint. If we want the footprint of this feature to go all the way to the edge of the stock or just be restricted to the face that was selected. We'll click the green check and that will create our face feature in setup one. Now we want the face feature to happen first so you can actually drag and drop that face feature within setup one and put it before um, all the pockets and holes. You can do the same with the individual setups as well to reorder those by dragging and dropping. We just want to make sure the face feature is the first thing that happens in setup one. And then let's take setup five, which is the back side of the part, and we'll drag it onto setup one so that it happens after setup one. So. We got the face feature at the beginning of setup one, and then we move setup five so that it, the order is setup one, then setup five, then setup two, three, four, six, and seven. We can do the same thing, um, just kind of thinking ahead a little bit here on the um, operation tree, is move setup five to happen immediately after setup one. And as the operations are generated for the features, they will actually appear in the order that they were listed in on the feature tree. Now let's take a look at the strategies we've got selected for these. So finish, rough, rough rest finish, 
or drill strategies are the defaults. If you right click on one of the features and choose parameters, you can actually go in and look at the different strategies that are available for that feature type. For instance, if I were to switch to rough and finish, it would show me the tools that would be selected if I use the rough and finish strategy um, and with the operations that go with the rough mill and the contour mill both looks like 20 millimeter tools to create these circular pockets. So we'll switch that to rough and finish. You can actually go in to your default feature strategies and kind of batch edit these. And so what I like to do if we don't want the secondary rest machining passes between the rough and finish we can actually change uh, each of these for our pockets and our slots to rough and finish. We'll click apply and you'll see your tree change to show those rough and finish strategies. And we'll click close to exit that window. The drill strategies should work for the holes. That's going to give us a center drill and drill operations, except for the counter bores that will have the corresponding contours included with them as well. Once we've created our features and we've picked the strategies we want to use for each of those features, we're ready to generate an operation plan. We can generate an operation plan for every feature in our part all at the same time throughout all the setups there on the command manager, or you can right click on the setups individually uh, to just generate an operation plan for that individual setup, or even uh, just a single uh, feature can be right clicked and generate operation plan for just a single feature. Um, so we've generated operations for all the features in all of our setups, and we realize that there's multiple operations for some of these features. We've got the face mill operation for the facing feature, and then a rough and a contour for the circular pockets, a rough and a contour for the um, irregular slots. And let's go ahead and generate toolpath for each of these features. We can do that from the command manager here just for the entire part. Toolpath can be generated for individual setups by right clicking on them or individual operations by right clicking on them. But uh, just for the, the visual example, let's go ahead and generate toolpaths for everything. So there's our face milling toolpath with the default parameters, rough mill, contour mill for the circular pockets. So the blue is cutting toolpath, cutting speeds, and then the red is your rapid movements. Now if we wanted to go ahead and add a, another operation onto these circular pockets, we can go back to the feature tree, right click on that feature, and just like we added the face feature in manually, we can also add operations in manually. So right click on the circular pocket feature, go to two and a half axis mill operations and choose contour mill. So maybe we're gonna rough this part in and uh, then do a, a, a kind of a intermediate contour mill with a larger tool. So we'll switch, uh, we'll, we'll keep that on the six millimeter tool. Make sure the feature is selected there, circular pocket group. And then under operation, we've got edit operational creation and the parameters that are going to get copied into this new operation uh, selected there. On our operation parameters will pop open. We're going to take a look at this a little bit later. So we'll go ahead and click OK to accept the defaults and create that operation. And on the operation tree, if you look at setup one, you'll actually see at the very bottom there's a blue contour mill 19 or contour mill uh, that we just created with a six millimeter flat in. Um, it's blue because it doesn't have a toolpath yet. Uh, we haven't generated the toolpath for it, um, but that's a good way for us to find the, the newly created operation there in the list. Drag it below the first contour mill at the beginning of the mill part setup one. So what we'll end up with for these features is a 20 millimeter flat end rough mill a 20 millimeter flat end contour mill and then a six millimeter flat end contour mill just to kind of clean things up a little bit. Let's take a look at the parameters we have for the allowance 
that we've got created on the control mill one operation with the 20 millimeter flat end. We're going to dig through this menu a little bit deeper later, but for now let's go to the contour tab. It's the third tab there. And in the side parameters where it says allowance, let's raise the allowance to 0.1 millimeters and click OK. That'll actually leave a little bit of material for the secondary contour mill operation to come in and remove. To take a look at the other controls we have over the operations, let's double click on the first contour mill there, the 20 millimeter contour mill. Let's double click on it again and open the operation parameters. And we'll kind of walk through the different parameters that we have controls over here. The first tab is the tool tab where we've got control over the tool and the holder. We can actually choose the tool from the tool crib or adjust any of the specific uh, dimensions that we need to there on the tool itself. So the first tab is the main uh, tool dimensions and specifications there. The second tab is the mill holder. We can control what the holder looks like and where it's positioned. The third tab is the tool crib tab. So you can actually choose if you wanted to use a, a different size flat end or a, or a different tool from the tool crib. You select the line and hit the select button. So we're going to switch it back over to the 20 millimeter tool that we want to use. Hit select. Click yes to accept the holder. Then if you want to add a tool from the technology database into the active tool crib, you under Flurm Library, you click Add, choose your tool type, and then we'll just say we want to um, filter to diameters uh, between 10 millimeter and 50 millimeter, just to kind of show you a quick list of what tools we have accessible in our database. Now the database is totally customizable, and then what tools we have pulled into the active part, customizable as well. We can set up the station and the, the comments, the descriptions of each of the tools in the active tool crib on the station tab and it actually shows what operations are using this tool as well. The next tab over is the feeds and speeds tab where we can actually choose the feeds and speeds for the toolpath uh, one of three ways. We can choose based on the um, library that's built in that is uh, going to look at the material and use the appropriate feeds and speeds for material. We can set it to tool which will actually um, associate it to the feeds and speeds that are connected to the tool. If we wanted to use the same speeds for that tool everywhere it's used, it makes a link and then where that's actually would be controlled is on the tool tab under mill tool sub tab. At the very bottom there's properties cutting parameters and in the cutting parameters we can actually set um, the, the feeds and speeds based on the tool itself. Uh, we can switch to library um, and you can have access to what it looks like in the library there. Or what we're going to do is uh, set it to operation. And with it set to operation, you have manual control over what you want the XY feed rate to be um, and then what percentage or absolute values you want for the Z feed rate and the lead ins. Uh, for now, let's just switch it back to library and use those recommended feeds and speeds. On the contour tab, you've got controls over the, the contour that are unique to the contour mill operation. So you control, like we saw earlier, the allowance that we set to 0.1 millimeters. Uh, you've got several other groups of controls, things like enabling, disabling chamfer machining, controlling um, the method of the cut, and uh, the depth parameters. On the NC tab, you've got access to control the where the rapid plane for rapid movements is. Uh, so we've got it 25 millimeters from the top of stock. Um, the clearance plane, if you want to go from top of feature or top of stock, and then how much offset there. And then the feed plane, if it's going to feed based off the, the current depth of the previously machined depth. Um, under feature options, you've got controls over the parameters of the feature itself, like the machining depth. If we wanted to override that and actually machine these in 15 millimeters, there's actually an override there you can use. We'll set it back to uh, 10, disabling the, the override. Um, the air segment offset is actually uh, you're able to control for especially for slots um, how much air are we going to cut and so air segment offset allows the tool to go 75 percent into the air um, you can adjust that there for tool paths that actually have open sides um, and as you see as we make adjustments on this in order to see the toolpath update you click preview down at the very bottom of the window 
it will update the toolpath for you and then you can just re uh, reopen the operation parameters dialog when you're done uh, looking at the updating and, and looking at the toolpath that is generated. Now contouring operations also give us access to lead-in controls so our lead-ins and lead-outs uh, the default here is just set to arcs and uh, the, the lead-in amount is based off 52 percent of the uh, tool diameter so anywhere you see percentages is typically referring to uh, percentage of the tool diameter and then if you click that percentage sign you can actually turn off the percentage aspect of it and uh, switch it over into just an absolute control. The advanced tab gives you some controls over the upper and lower limits on the toolpath if you wanted to mirror the toolpath um, and then how you want it to treat avoid and contain areas. Second to last tab here is the posting tab so very similar to with the machine setup the posting tab has your kind of your custom inputs that you might have for your post processor things like um, the, whether the coolant is enabled and what mode the coolant's in, things like that. And then the Optimize tab gives you control on how it handles uh, different areas of the part. Do we want to do it with a grid pattern or like this, the default is the shortest path. And then at the bottom of the Optimize tab, it actually gives you analysis of the toolpath for uh, how many lines and arc segments are in it, the length of those, as well as um, the estimated machining time um, for this toolpath that we have open. And then a connection there to the TechDB ID that you can click and go directly in your database to the, where the defaults for this operation are controlled. So closing out of that, if we go into a different operation type, for instance, uh, this face mill operation, you'll actually see that most of the tabs are the same. Um, there's just a unique tab for facing instead of the contour uh, tab. We have a facing tab where you can control um, the parameters that are applicable for this type of operation. You can close out of that and double click on the first rough mill operation in part setup one and we'll take a look at the controls that are unique to roughing. Um, so you see we don't have lead ins and lead outs on this menu but we do have the roughing tab that has all of its parameters. Most unique here would be like the pattern that the rough uh, pass is going to take. So pocket in, pocket out, uh, zigzag, spiral in, spiral out. And actually if you select those from the drop down menu, the preview on the right side of this parameter dialog will actually update and kind of give you a hint of what that looks like. So we'll leave it on pocket out. Go ahead and click OK and close out of that dialog. And let's go ahead and kind of just skim through each of these toolpaths and take a look at what these rough mill and contour mill toolpaths look like for the other pockets and slots. Then we get to our hole operations. You see the center drill operation for these two, the, this whole group on the back of the part, a drilling operation, a center drill for the first set of counterbore holes, drill, and then a contour mill for the top portion of the cut, and then a chamfer contour mill to chamfer the top of the edge. So because SolidWorks Cam Camworks recognize these features as counterbore holes, the drill strategy for counterbore holes actually involves control mill and by default includes that countersink operation to uh, chamfer the top edge, the break edge on the top of it. Then we've got another set of holes with center drill and drill operations and then on through each of the other um, regular holes and um, as you can see with this uh, other counterbore hole you've got roughing and contour operations because of the size of that. So we'll just walk through and get a look at uh, each of the toolpaths that are created for this first setup. Get an idea of what, uh, what we've achieved so far with this. So the toolpaths are kind of your first opportunity to see what the uh, code is going to look like. Um, even before we go into the simulation or step through the toolpath, we can tell a whole lot of uh, how the machine is going to behave to generate this code um, by looking at the toolpaths themselves. Taking a look at the tool paths for these hole operations, you'll actually see each of the tools listed beside the drill and the center drill operations. It's used for those. And we might want to organize these. Uh, we can actually sort them either by operation or by tool or by both. So let's sort by operation type. Um, to get to the menu, you right click on mill part setup and go to sort operations. 
And then on the sort tab, we'll choose operation type. After face mill, let's drag rough mill and contour mill just below it. And we'll leave the rest as it is. And then after it's sorted by operation, we'll sort it by tool. And we'll just keep the default there where they're sorted by size. Click OK. That will sort your setup one with the face mill, then the rough mill, then the contour mills, and then it will go into uh, your center drill and drill countersink operations. So this allows us to um, bypass uh, a bunch of tool changes and kind of simplify the code a little bit, um, working with the 20 millimeter for several passes before switching over to a different tool. Of course, you can always sort the operations by dragging and dropping them in this operation tree, uh, just like we did with the features. Now, if we want to simplify this even further, we might decide that we want to choose a 16 millimeter center drill to replace everywhere that uh, the other center drills used. And so what we can do is actually switch over to our tool crib tab, the last tab in the property manager. We'll expand out the tools and you can actually drag and drop tools, but uh, tool paths between the different tools on this menu to switch which is used. So I'll move everything from tool 20 up to tool 14 and you'll see uh, the operations have all been updated to use that assigned 16 millimeter center drill. So that's a way we can kind of do a batch edit instead of opening each toolpath up open individually. Next we'll take another look at the simulation of this toolpath. And we saw where you could launch the simulate toolpath from the command manager at the top, but you can also right click on an individual setup or an individual operation to run a simulation. Uh, so for this instance, let's right click on setup one and choose simulate toolpath and I'll actually run through simulation of just that individual toolpath. So we can switch this over to just do a single operation at a time, adjust the speed down a little bit, and step through the facing operation. Uh, if you look under the information section, it actually tells you the name of the operation and the tool that's being used uh, during this simulation. Once you've got that ran for that operation, we can show the comparison. Um, there's actually a section view tool you can section the model based off of certain planes. You can control the visibility of the stock. So no, no display, shaded, transparent. You can control the display of the tool. Same way, wireframe, shaded, translucent. Um, the control, the, the view of the holder itself. If you're in an assembly, the view of the fixtures, and then also the view of the target part, the actual model itself. So like setting both to translucent, you get a nice view of both the target part and the stock. Um, so I set this to translucent for the target part and let's set shaded on the stock so we can kind of see it as it makes cuts. Further down under options, there's a few boxes to control collision detection. And so you can set the tool, the shank and the holder to either ignore, cut, or pause on collision. Hit play, we'll go through the next operation is the rough mill for the circular pockets. Then the rough mill for the slots. Play again for the rough mill for the larger slot. And if we want to change that, we'll just go ahead and go to the end and speed it up a little bit and play all the way through the end. So this is just going to play all the operations for setup one is what we had selected. It'll run through the, the contour mill finishing out each of the slots and pockets, the contour mill for um, the counterbore holes, and now it's working its way down further into the counterbore holes. Uh, once we get the entire setup one ran, uh, we'll be able to see uh, what's left for the additional setups or what might be able to be done, uh, additional operations and features that could be done from this setup. So there's our comparison. Blue is material that would need to be removed. So we see there's a perimeter that would need to be removed on the part. Let's go back to the feature tree in SOLIDWORKS CAM, CAMWORKS, and uh, we'll create a part perimeter feature on mill part setup one. Right click on mill part setup one, 
go to part perimeter feature. Here we can choose if we want it to be a boss or an open pocket type. So a boss is going to allow you just to go around the outside, whereas an open pocket will actually rough out the outside around the part. And you can see uh, when you hover over the strategy, you can see a preview of the tool that's being used. And then the end condition, based off of a certain area on the part, the bottom of the part, we're going to come up 10 millimeters from the bottom. Maybe that's where we've got it you know, held in jaws, and we're going to mill that off from the other side. So you'll see your feature added, the perimeter boss one, the end of mill part setup one. Click on it and click generate operation plan, that first icon. That'll add the operation in. Click on it and click generate toolpath. Again, that first icon there. And you'll have a default toolpath for the contour mill operation. And then you can either simulate it, step through it. Um, this is what the step through operation dialog looks like, where you can actually control the position uh, in the toolpath you can play fast forward rewind just like we did with the simulation um, just to see the tool along the toolpath. And we'll simulate the toolpath for that contour mill. Right click on it and simulate. See, we might want to use a larger tool to kind of take off a little bit more material and, and be a little more aggressive with it. Um, there's also another mode you can run the simulation in. If you right click on contour mill and hold shift when you select simulate toolpath, it'll actually give you a work in progress uh, dialog to allow you to choose the previous operations to be calculated in the simulation before we see Contour Mill 20 ran. So here we'll leave everything selected there, um, set the quality to fine and push OK and it'll include all those operations in a quick calculation. Show us what that looks like at that point. You see the comparison, a lot of that has already been removed and then here's what that additional part perimeter operation looks like. So let's do go in and change the size of that tool for the part perimeter operation. You can double click on contour mill and go to the tool tab and on the tool crib tab instead of this 12 millimeter cut diameter go to tool crib click on the tool uh, station number five is the 20 millimeter flat end and click select and we were prompted to change the holder, go ahead and click yes. And you'll see the larger tool that we're going to use kind of previewed while you're on these tabs for that. And then we can change the, the cut depth as well. It's a 50% of the diameter by default. Let's just up that to uh, from 10 millimeters to uh, 20 millimeters and get a look at what that might look like. Click preview and you'll get an update. That might be a little too aggressive, so let's back off of that a hair uh, and we'll put it down to 15 millimeters. preview it there and that gives us four passes for that part perimeter with a larger tool. Click OK and that will accept that. We'll go ahead and run a simulation of the entire setup again and we can actually speed through the setup using the turbo mode that's built into the simulate dialog. So that far top right icon will switch us into turbo mode and uh, you can only use it for a single setup, but it'll actually skip through the animations. We'll click play. It'll calculate that without showing the animations and then show us the final result. Of course, comparison and the display modes um, are available for that in this, this uh, setup as well. So that looks good. From here, if we're satisfied with what we see in the simulation, we can go ahead and post-process the code. You see that in the command manager. Uh, let's run the full simulation with all the setups real quick. Take a look at what that's going to look like. I'll just speed it up and run through it. Now you might want to go in and do some more work on the uh, setups from the side, maybe add a facing operation on the back side. So let's go back to the second part setup there, mill part setup 5, and add a facing operation in for that just to remove the rest of that material. We'll pick the bottom face, go up to stock for the end condition, and hit the green check. It'll create the feature. We'll right click on the feature, generate operation plan to create the operation. Go over to the operation tree, right click on the face mill operation, generate toolpath. And then we can drag the face mill operation to the top of that second mill part setup, mill part setup five. And we can add the rest of the part perimeter feature 
onto that second setup, meal part setup 5, go over to the feature tree, right click on setup, go to new part perimeter feature, and for this one we're actually going to base it off of top of part 10 millimeters to just bring in the perimeter for the rest of that. Uh, we'll go ahead and push it to 20 millimeters. That creates the feature. Go ahead and uh, let's go back into it and actually edit the strategy just for a fine strategy on that. Click OK. Then we'll right click on the feature, generate operation plan. Then in the operation tree, find the operation, right click on it, generate toolpath. And then that gives us the part perimeter feature at the end of that setup. We'll go ahead and simulate the toolpath for everything again. Hit play. And that has the additional uh, facing operation and the part perimeter operation for the bottom face. We go back, double click on the contour mill at the end of that setup, and let's uh, change the tool size up to that 20 millimeter. So on the tool tab, go to tool crib, pick tool station number five, the 20 millimeter, hit select. Yes to confirm the holder change and then OK. And that gives us uh, the 20 millimeter tool and those two passes will be fine for that bottom side. And it is an iterative process, kind of making some tweaks, adding the features and operations, going back and running the simulation until you're satisfied with the way the simulation looks. Uh, from here, we've kind of got the basics down. We'll go ahead and post process the code. So you can click post process on the command manager or you can right click on an individual setup or an individual operation to post out the code just for that section. Once you click post process, you'll be able to save it somewhere on your computer to give it a name and an extension. We'll click save. Then when you hit play, it'll actually generate the code and write to that text file. After the code's generated, under the options here in the post process dialog, We've actually got access to uh, go ahead and open the code in the CamWorks NC editor. Um, that's also available anytime from the CamWorks command manager bar. Then we'll click the green check to go ahead and uh, finish that tool. CamWorks NC editor will open and show us um, what that toolpath looks like. And if you go to the backplot tab, you can actually open the backplot window and show um, a visualization of the toolpath. So this is after the post processor has posted the code out, kind of an evaluation of that. Well, that's it for our introduction to uh, creating your first toolpath with SolidWorks Cam CamWorks. I hope you learned a lot, were able to uh, get your feet wet, uh, looking at where the tools are in the user interface, um, how you can use automatic feature recognition and generate operations, generate toolpath automatically, as well as manually using interactive feature creation and manually creating operations for those features. Be sure to check out our other videos for more information, uh, going deeper with more advanced functionality, uh, getting into three-axis machining, turning, and the other capabilities available with SolidWorks CAM uh, standard that comes with every seat of SolidWorks. SolidWorks Cam Professional, and each of the CamWorks modules.